Greetings. Welcome to ISC 2021. And I hope this continues to find you and your loved ones in wonderful health. I'm Sunita Chandra Shekhar from University of Delaware and leading the track on parallel programming and performance modeling. And that's one of the tracks in the ISD 2021 focus sessions. To that end, um, in this particular track, we are going to hear from a wonderful line of speakers in four different sessions um, with respect to performance modeling, using HPC as a tool you know, to enable science and programming, tackling reconfigurable computing programming challenges and challenges at the um, exascale programming. So the very first session um, is being chaired by Professor Michaela Topper, and we have two speakers. Um, the first speaker will be Dr. Lavanya Ramakrishnan from Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, who is going to talk to us about workflows. How important workflows are with respect to HPC ecosystem, because they help us, you know, create a relationship between data and processing. And how important workflows are as a tool going forward, you know, that needs to be supported on um, HPC systems. To that end, this, this talk is going to talk about the different important aspects of workflow management on HPC. The next speaker, Professor Jack Tungara from uh, UTK, is um, going to talk to us about how evolving hardware architecture, what is their impact on the challenges that they're bringing, you know, in order to achieve high performance mathematical solvers, the ne necessitating uh, introduction of new algorithms and how they're embodied in software libraries. So in this uh, visually effective slide, we see implementation robustness versus adoption levels. Very clearly in the x-axis, we see the path, you know, any, any software takes right from internal group to um, adopted by you know, external groups. And the y-axis, we see the path that the software takes right from its algorithm stage to creating a portable software. So with the move to exascale increasing intentionality, about the whole process will benefit long-term sustainability of software stack. You know, it, as, as we know, it takes several rounds before the software can really get accepted. So that's what we're going to see in this talk and learn about what are those steps. In the next session, we have uh, a session on HPC as a tool to enable science and programming. And this is chaired by Dr. David Bernhold from Oak Ridge National Lab with three speakers. Um, Dr. Sadaf Alam is going to uh, talk to us about supercomputing infrastructure as code, super IAC, to enable exascale workflows. Uh, we might even hear from an application standpoint, a numerical weather prediction standpoint, you know, what are the use cases, what are the drivers, and um, you know, how to ensure end-to-end -end integrity of supercomputing workflows, cloud systems, and storage solutions. Uh, very similarly, we're going to hear from Dr. Guido Yukulan from Helmholtz Ventrum Dresden Rosendorf, where he is going to talk about how to bridge the gap between the needs from a domain science standpoint with the utilities and capabilities that the computer science could offer. So that's split between these two, um, you know, two, two different parts in this slide, as you see where with respect to domain science, we have different types of complexity, including the three Bs of data, which are velocity, variety, and uh, volume, right? And then there is the experimental complexity, then there is reproducibility. And at the same time, computer information and data sciences offers you AI methods, right? It, it offers you programmability, but how do you marry them together? How do you bridge the gap between um, domains, and it is also entails training, consulting, practical solutions, and so on. A very nice segue is from Mr. Robert Henshaw from Indiana University, who is going to talk to us about how do you attract new users to HPC environment? As we know, HPC carries a very steep learning curve, right? So how do you really overcome the learning curve and how to provide a familiar desktop environment that is used as an interface to HPC system. And Indiana University has been going down that path for several years now. So he's gonna share some recipes with us. 
The third session is tackling programming challenges for reconfigurable computing. And we all know that reconfigurable computing is a tough nut to crack. So this session chaired by uh, Dr. Venkata Krishnan from Intel is going to tell us about the different aspects of um, reconfigurable computing. Professor Dana Goringer from TU Trust in Germany is going to um, tell us about OpenVX and uh, you know, applications of vision, computer vision basically. And she is going to introduce a highly optimized parameterizable high level synthesis HLS open source library for FPGAs called High Flip VX Library. And she's gonna introduce this project with respect to the open VX standardization standpoint and uh, you know how this can help and drive computer vision applications. Then we have Dr. Andrea Koch from Intel, um, Intel who is going to talk to us about network, how network is the accelerator. Here, COPA stands for Configurable Network Protocol Accelerator, and the talk is going to address challenges uh, in the tight integration between communication and computation. And uh, what we also see here is how do you enhance OFI, the Open Fabrics Interface Networking, to support these configurable um, network protocol accelerator capabilities. And uh, as you can see, it's neat, neatly layered you know, and uh, talks about um, how do you use OFI with extensions in order to expose information to the application and hardware. Um, the last talk in this session would be from David Donofrio, who is gonna to talk to us about the programming challenges for reconfigurable computing. And um, he's gonna tell us about OpenSOC. OpenSOC, um, you know, and is a system architect, a hardware co-design flow for reconfigurable computing with the main goal of improving performance gains of reconfigurable computing, as we all know that this computing requires rapid turnaround of hardware designs. So OpenSOC is an open source hardware generation flow, which starts with an ISA specification and it can generate a Verilog RTL, uses LVM as its backend, targeted to the um, processor design. So the speaker is also going to talk about hardware co-design, um, you know, workflow in the process, which must um, generate the necessary software for, you know, a very, uh, a wonderful design. The last session of this um, invited focus session will be overcoming challenges in exascale programming. And here we have three speakers, the first being Professor Florina Charba from um, Basel, Switzerland, who is uh, going to talk about exposing, expressing, exploiting parallelism, both from the hardware standpoint and the software standpoint. This visually effective picture already tells us the different levels of parallelism out there, right? From the hardware as well as software standpoint. And if you look at this dotted line of processor and node tuple, Below this, there is less exposure to the you know, programmer side of things. And above this tuple, there is a possibility of better exposure. And she's gonna talk about addressing these challenges from a scheduling standpoint. And to that end, here we see batch level, application level, thread level scheduling, and load balancing, and how this can have a massive impact on you know, a, a real world application. And that is star collision simulation written using MPI plus OpenMP. And you see a lot of uh, you know, wonderful images here. And we're looking at the right-hand side image where we see a drop, right? A 40% reduction from a peak standpoint. Um, and it goes down at about uh, 33,000 uh, time step where there is a switch from MPI uh, factoring plus OpenMP dynamic scheduling with 10 chunk size to OpenMP guided, no chunk size. And then there is a, the, you see there is a severe, uh, you know, load imbalance. And then the idea being, you know, how to co conjoin, how conjoin choices of scheduling methods, you know, at both levels would help improve performance and alleviate this sort of uh, load imbalance, right? And uh, this is, this will be highlighted uh, from an application standpoint. 
The second speaker we have is Professor Andrea Snuffer from TU Dresden, who is going to talk to us about performance analysis for new HPC programming models. And uh, evidently, computer architecture has evolved. And you know, for a long time, we had certain types of systems, but now we have Fugaku and the upcoming AMD CPU type of systems. Parallel programming is evolving, performance tools are evolving, but the question is, are we there you know, to tackle the uh, rich hardware capabilities these um, upcoming systems can really offer? And um, you know, he's, he's saying performance is an important concern, which means it should be measured, evaluated, optimized. And uh, you know, still we need these software tools, but they are faced with challenges with evolving hardware architectures. So this talk is going to give us updates on the most uh, or the much needed performance tools, you know, the two no tools approaches um, that we need to address this particular challenge. The very last speaker we have is uh, Sado-san from Riken, who is uh, going to talk to us about Fugaku. And by now, I think all of us have a good handle of what the system is, its you know, capabilities and um, the hardware configuration and stuff. And, and this talk is going to talk about the programming models and programming models also beyond Fugaku. There is a mixture of, you know, you see OpenMP, uh, Xscalable 2.0, there is one API, DPC++, there is OpenCL, Sickle, Cocos, and uh, Xscalable ACP as well. So this, so, you know, it gives you a grand view of what you could do with applications on Fugaku. So that brings to the end of this uh, teaser trailer. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I'm very grateful to the speakers who have given us these slides. And I'm very much looking forward to hearing from them. Till then, you take care.